guys and welcome back to yet another video um, I, I apologise for my voice uh, kind of why I haven't made a video this week because I am currently in grips of cold and uh, it's not it's not fun really but you know what can you do so um, in honour of the Oscars on Sunday night I decided that maybe it was time to do a few reviews for some of the films that are up for best picture. So today we start off with The Danish Girl which was directed by Tom Hooper and is the story of Gerda and Aeon, Aeon? Vergner and it tells the story of Aeon Vergner's transition into Lily Elba, even though her real name was actually Lily Elvin. I don't understand why that was kind of changed, but you know, well, we we have to accept um, that it was changed, and it documents the first. Well, it wasn't actually the first, but we'll we'll ignore that. The first case of male to female sexual reassignment and uh, this film was good <laughs> this film was very very good the thing that definitely secures its status of good film are the performances Eddie Redmayne and Alicia Vikander, Vikander? are absolutely phenomenal in their roles. You, the acting is, it is just sublime. And Eddie Redmayne, talented man that you are. It was, it was just fantastic. They brought this script to life. They were, you have such an emotional investment with these characters. And, because, ah, uh, I did a little bit of research beforehand and the, the performances definitely convey what they have to about the relationship in the context of the script but I, I feel that there is kind of the allusion to a debate that was going on at the time that um, Lily and Gerda were alive and that's whether Gerda was actually a lesbian because of her um, erotic paintings of Lily and I kind of it's, it's more alluded to they don't put it so much in the film but you do get that sense that Gerda kind of does have feelings for Lily as well um, and it's not just her relationship with Iron what is his name? I can't remember. We're just gonna call we're just gonna call the character Lily because that is the true form, the end of her metamorphosis. So the performances were phenomenal and it's it's very difficult because I have a soft spot for Eddie Redmayne already. And it is very difficult to know whether it will be him or Leonardo DiCaprio that gets the Oscar for Best Actor. I, I don't know. I think at this point Leo has just been, he's been passed over so many times. I don't know if Eddie's going to snatch it from him. I don't know. It's, I've, the other men in the category of best actor are phenomenal. But I think it's definitely a two horse race between Eddie, <laughs> Eddie, my mate Eddie, uh, and Leo. It, it's going to be a difficult one to call, I think. But the performance is <sighs> brilliant. Just everyone brought their A game. The cinematography, it's got the very Danny Boyle esque <laughs> photography. And what I mean by this is it's very clear in, like, in the adaptation of Lame Is. <laughs> it's it's the first one I go to in my mind. But there's a lot of, it's really weird the way he sets up his frames and it's, it's not bad, it's not bad by any means, but there's a lot of blank space 
So you'll have like the actor in the corner of the shot and then you've just got this, the rest of the shot is just the wall. And it's just like, oh. <laughs> so you don't have the actor central, the focus, the thing that your eyes go closest to is a section of a wall or window. It, it's a bit weird. <laughs> the framing is a bit weird but it's, it's artistic, I like it. Um, and I think the fact that the film itself has quite a lot of, it's got a place very much within art and bohemian, the bohemian kind of architecture, there is, it's very subtle, it's very subtle, you've kind of got to be looking for it, but there is a lot of continuous shots of, um, I was going to call it Denmarkian. Yeah, that's what it is. Denmarkian. Danish architecture and Parisian architecture. It is a very pretty film. It is very, very pretty. It's just uh, the, the framing that just is a bit weird to me. I, It's not, as I said before, it's not bad. It's just kind of looking at it thinking... The blank space annoys me a bit. I think that's what it is. But uh, the actor becomes such a small part of that shot. It's just focus on the scenery, which, like an example I will give you, is <clears throat> it's not even from the Danish girl. It's from Les Mis, where you've got Valjean and he's sitting there in the church and there's more of a focus on the riches behind him and he looks bedraggled and he, he's in a pretty rough state to be fair and it's kind of it heightens the contrast between Valjean and his appearance and the fact that he has been completely What's the word? <laughs> He's been completely made destitute by his situation and his in surroundings that are so beautiful and rich and it just, it really heightens the contrast. And if I remember correctly, there's a scene in The Danish Girl where Gerda is sitting in, I think it's a ballet studio if I remember correctly, and she is sort of framed in the bottom left, bottom right hand corner, and you can kind of just see the um, reflections of the ballet dancers behind her, and you can kind of vaguely see um, Lily. It that works, but there are just some other times where I think yet yeah, again it's Gerda she's sitting in front of something and it's a very similar sort of setup but it's just wooden planks behind her it's just a bit like eh. oh. but cinematography on the whole was beautiful the framing was just a bit off um my main issue to be fair lies in the fact that i haven't read the book myself but I did do a bit of research on um, Lily and Gerda beforehand. <coughs> and it isn't particularly historically accurate. Which I, I kind of have seen the same complaints made about the book. So it might not be the film's fault. Because it is adapted from the book. But... There are just certain details that don't seem to quite add up with the historical records of it. Like the fact that Lily was not the first woman to undergo this surgery. She was the second. There was one before her whose name I cannot quite remember. But she... Ugh, it, it's very difficult to know the right pronoun to use. Um, I guess when they came to the doctor, they were a he, and then he had the surgery and became 
I think he was called Little Dora. Well, she was called Little Dora. And her operation was such a success that that was what attracted Lily to go and see the doctor. And I think she had a vaginoplasty. Vaginoplasty. Yeah, I think, I think that's how you pronounce it. And so it... I think the reason that Lily's story gets more attention is because it was more publicised at the time, whereas Little Dora's story wasn't so publicised. <laughs> I've used publicised way too many times in that sentence. Publicised doesn't even sound like a word anymore. Um, so it, it just that mm, it was a bit. But then again, that, as I said, that might just be because that's the way it was portrayed in the book and the book may not follow history to a T. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, <coughs> another fact is that apparently Lily was... They think she might have been intersex, so she had XXY chromosomes, which would have made her hermaphrodite so she would have already had some female parts like they think she had um, ovaries in her abdomen <coughs> so she would have already had more female hormones in her body than male and that was just something that was totally omitted I I guess yeah, again, if that had been omitted from the book, I understand. But that would have been something quite interesting. And the fact that the actor playing Lily, Eddie Redmayne, fantastic man, brilliant actor, is size gender. He is a man and he is he has accepted his gender identity as a man. Whereas, I don't know if it would have been, it would have been interesting to have an actor that identified as transgender playing the character of Lily and seeing what elements they can bring from their own personal experiences. I think that would have been interesting to explore, but Eddie Redmayne did a fantastic job and I, I don't think your gender identity has an effect on your ability to act or portray certain things. <coughs> of course it helps if you've had some of the same experiences but I think there were elements of Eddie Redmayne's performance that were just fantastic. So I I don't know. <laughs> just just things that are popping out of my head. As you can tell, I have not scripted this. I don't script my reviews. So I may just be babbling. Hashtag sorry. <coughs> oh god, I keep coughing. Many apologies, much sorry. Um the anyway, moving away from that. There was just oh the time frame seemed really weird and I don't know what it is with certain films but or even certain adaptations but the time frame is really weird they don't give you a clear <coughs> <coughs> oh sorry about that coughing fit ah um they don't give you a very good sense of the progression of time now, they say that this film starts, it begins in 1926. Well, that, that, that's a bit weird. Um, because at that point, Lily was about 44 years old, and Gerda, I think, was... Let me count this. Um, she was about 38 or so. 
well, let's, let's just tally this up. Neither actor looks like they're that old. Um, they don't seem to age. Because, <laughs> spoiler alert, but then again, it is a biographical film and you can find out this information from Wikipedia. Um, but she was 48 when she died in 1930. So, that's kind of a thing, I think with the casting, although the actors were fantastic and they did really good jobs with their roles, they were way too young to be playing the roles. It kind of, to make it clearer, the progression of time, I think they might have needed older actors. But that's just a personal thing from my own research. You know, they're more than entitled to hire whoever they want. Um, but I think the fact that these people were older, it would require an older actor to try and convey this, I do believe. Uh, but there's just, this whole film is supposed to take place over the period of four years. And, 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 and. <clears throat> Lily and Gerda were married for, I think it was 28 years. And in 1926, I think it's Lily that says that they've been married for six years. Well, no, no you haven't. You've been married for 22 years. Uh, it's like, uh, really? <coughs> it's just little discrepancies like that within the historical timeline. And there is no real... You don't get a sense of how time is passing. Like, one minute um, Lily has gone into hospital then she has to get stronger, then she has the operation, then she goes home and it's there's no real sense of the passing of time and it makes it feel like all of this is happening in a very tight time frame. The only thing that kind of gives you a hint that it's been a longer time is <laughs> the length of Eddie Redmayne's hair. That is about the real progression of time. It's It feels like it goes through a very short time period. It doesn't feel like it's showing four years of these people's lives because they don't... Obviously, there is a great theme of change and metamorphosis within this film, but they don't seem to change in appearance... Well... Obviously, you can argue that Lily changes completely, but Gerda doesn't change her physical appearance at all, apart from getting a haircut. That's about it. There's no sense of ageing, there's no sense of time, which it kind of, it, it bugs me a little bit. Um... But, you know, that's it's a director's decision, but I don't feel like... I feel like you need that sense of time to know how this wasn't just, oh, I, I'm Lily, and then, bam, operation. <coughs> and I know you don't have much time to spend. I mean, you've got... I think this film was about nearly two hours, so you don't have, like, heaps of time. But it would have been nice to see exactly how time passed, <laughs> how the characters aged. I, yeah, that, that kind of irked me. But uh, moving on to another positive. Um, costume was gorgeous. Um, I loved the 1920s. The fashion was just fantastic. Um, the hair and makeup was great even though I was a little bit, I don't know if I was so much annoyed or disappointed in the um, academy, well not the academy, 
the director um, because apparently Alicia Vikander revealed that um, she had to have her hair dyed blonde because I mean she is naturally she's got olive skin and she's got brown hair and brown eyes apparently the um, director producers decided that she needed to bleach her hair and she also had to have her skin edited to look paler which I, Alicia Vikander is a fantastic actress but if you're going to try and be true to the original character the original person who was blonde hair blue eyed how about not hiring a olive skinned dark hair dark eyed actress why not hire someone who is blue eyed and blonde haired why would you go to the effort of making an actor appear paler because that is just sending a very negative message to <coughs> anyone with even a slightly darker complexion yeah it's just I, I don't know exactly how I feel about that I don't agree with the fact that they felt they had to make her skin appear paler I mean you're leaving her with brown eyes so just just do your own thing you don't have to make her look paler to look more like the original person because she doesn't look much like her at all so just run with it just have fun have an olive skinned dark hair dark eyed Gerda don't try and make her into something that she's that the actor is not uh, I, I don't know I don't know um, the score was beautiful um, yeah, I think that is about all I have to say. Um, some of the film, some of the moments. <coughs> oh God, this is really bad. I'm sorry. <coughs> some of the moments in this film were exquisitely beautiful, and there's one scene which kind of spoilers. Um, well, there are two scenes, but I'm not going to tell you about the second one because it's just really, really sad. Um, First one is um, where you've got um, the male persona of Lily, and he is—he's a—I'm not exactly sure what it was supposed to be, but it was like um, the place where they had all of the rails of clothing, and you see—I'm I'm just going to call him Eddie for now. <laughs> male persona, Eddie and he's just standing there and you can see that he's kind of he's imagining himself as a woman he looks at himself and you know he starts just sort of looking down and he tucks his penis between his legs and he starts gazing at his form as a woman and there was just something about the score and the cinematography at that moment that was just gorgeous and uh, it's going to just be really seedy but I, you know, I do stare at Aiden Turner's six pack more often than I should and Henry Cavill's six pack <sighs> but anyway, Eddie It was impressive. <laughs> if if you know what I'm talking about, you get what I'm talking about there. Let's just say he uh he'll fit in well with uh, the Slytherins. So he's got quite the basilisk in his chamber of secrets. Uh, moving on because I am a disgusting human being. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll go into the second scene, uh, Lily's death scene. Oh my god, that was that was really emotional. There's just something about it that you get the sense that I think it's the acting. 
that Lily has finally become herself and she's fully complete and she's at the happiest that she's ever been. She's got Gerda by her side. She's out in the garden and you know, she's holding on to Gerda's hand and she... I, You kind of know that she's not long for this world because she'd just been burning a fever and you kind of think, oh, she recovered, but she just looks so pale and weak. And her con the contrast in the skin colours between the two, you're kind of going, oh. And you can tell that Lily, she's very pale and the colour's gone from her lips. And then she just, she's just, she dies with a smile on her face. And you're just sitting there just like, Oh, the feels are real. And you just kind of feel Gerda's devastation, but you kind of feel happy that Lily finally got to be who she wanted to be in the last day of her life. She was a full woman. She had everything, well, anatomically, she had everything that she wanted. As she stated, the doctors had corrected a mistake that God had made and it was just so beautiful to see her get that and to kind of get a sense that she was at peace and it was just so emotional oh, but anyway so the acting was absolutely phenomenal and oh I I don't know between Leonardo DiCaprio and Eddie Redmayne for best actor, but I think without a doubt, Alicia, oh, Alicia, Alicia Vikander definitely deserves best supporting actress. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. She was just absolutely fantastic. She's such a talented actress. Uh, the score was beautiful. The costume and makeup, fantastic, very suited to its context. There was just a few things with like the sense of time throughout the film and the use of framing that was just a bit weird to me. And the changes from the actual historical facts kind of, it just didn't sit right with me and I, I know that's it might just be the book's fault. Um, I I don't know. I haven't read the book. I just did my historical research beforehand. So overall, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Um, the acting makes the film. There is just technical elements about it that I just started to grate on me a bit. But it was a very beautiful film and... It is a very inspiring film for the transgender community and it just, I, I feel like this film demonstrates to people that don't quite understand what it means to be transgender and I don't think, um, like I, I identify as cisgender I am a female and I agree with the fact that I am a female I'm anatomically a female and psychologically I am a female so I don't know what it's like to be transgender but I feel like this film it kind of gives you a, just a tiny little beginning of an insight into what it's like to be transgender and to feel like you've been born in the wrong body and it does it in a very beautiful way but there was just technical elements that were a bit all over the place but um seven and a half out of ten well i give it seven and a half seven and a half all right seven and a half i'll compromise um but that was my thoughts let me know what you guys thought down below and i will see you next time for another film that is up for best picture at the oscars review see you later